just move on into the worksheet and workbook manipulation. This is another I think that is very useful. I do more worksheet manipulation than I do workbook manipulation, but you want to move the sheets around and stuff like this. So it looks like we're going to open this file called worksheet. I'll probably close off a few of my files. Okay, so there's several definitions. You can identify worksheets different ways. This is called the visual sheet name. And so essentially what this means is that what I see on the screen here is the visual sheet name. And so I can do that by saying my sheet four, that's going to identify this one here. No, no, no matter where it is, you see, it's in different positions here. Or I can say worksheets, my worksheet select. So if I want to say my worksheet two, then it was going to select number two right here. See? So the idea is that you can just type in the name that you physically see, that you know what the names are. So that's one way to identify a sheet. Another way to identify a sheet is the called the order created. That means when you create a new sheet, see this says sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. But you notice that it says sheet one, two, three, four this way. But if you move these around, you see it doesn't matter because the order that you created them is the order they're going to be in. Let's go through and show you that a little bit more. So let's open up worksheet one, or just worksheet, I think. It's important to understand these names. I think these names are very important to get your hands on worksheet. Okay, so we have sheet one, two, three, and four. Now, if I go to my Visual Basic Editor and look at my worksheet, you see it shows one, two, three, four this way, see it? If I were to move sheet three or sheet four in front of two like this, so it's got sheet one, two, three, and four this way, let's look at our Visual Basic Editor to see how that changed the order of that. So you see it didn't change the order here at all, see it? it still recognized them as the first sheet that was created and the order that they were created in. So the idea of that is this is the name that you see on the sheet here, and this is the order that they were created in. So even though I have these in the wrong order, this still shows me in the proper order that they were created in. So if I were to click on this one and call this test four, like this, then See, test four is there, even though four, that was the fourth sheet that was created. So it looks at the order of these created. So sometimes you don't really care where they are. You just want to know the order that they were created in. So this is another method you could use to do that. And that's kind of interesting. The other method is, and we'll go through and test each one. This is called the index number. So this simply says that the index number is you would identify it as a sheet one, two, three, or four this way. And then that actually looks at the sheet name also. So this is the same, kind of the same as the order in a way, but it looks at the order, worksheet one, two, three, and four. And the last method, I think that was the last method, yeah. So there's just two of the same method here. And these commands here is the activate, meaning activate that sheet. This is select that sheet. And activate and select are almost the same. Uh, the only difference between activate and select, it still selects it when you activate it. The select allows you to select multiple sheets, where multiple worksheets, where the activate does not let you select multiple, it just activates a sheet, one or another. See, here's this little thing called false here. So if I select sheet two, and then I select sheet three and call it false, then that means sheet two is still selected. And this is sheet four select false. That means sheet two is selected, sheet three is selected, and sheet four is selected. So that's kind of the difference between the activate and the select. So let's go through and play with these a little bit back here. And just to get more familiar with the naming convention structure. Let's go back to the beginning here. Here I have a little exercise that simply says, okay, subsheet here, my sheet, 
so we can call these my sheet one, two, three, and four like this. Then it says worksheets activate. So we want to activate sheet one, wherever that's located. But sheet three, we want to actually select sheet three. So this actually does the same thing, correct? Because it selects one, then it selects three. And then it's going to rename sheet one to dot name to this new name. And then it's going to take sheet two and move it after sheet three. So we're going to kind of, we can watch all this happen. So we're going to rename our sheets one through four, and then we will go through and cut this code out and then just run it and watch it, watch each command work one at a time. So see, it says one, two, three, four here. Looks like we moved this around too to show you how that works. Okay, so we're going to come back to sheet one, call this my sheet one. This one's going to be my sheet four. Four. This is going to be my sheet two. Two. And this is going to be my sheet three. And break over Visual Basic. Go to our sheets, add a module, and paste that code. Okay, so I wanted to name these sheets because I wanted you to see the differences between the names. That you see that this was the fourth sheet that was created, yet it's actually in the second position. So if you're going to identify the names this way, then you can manipulate them. So let's just take this and run this. So this is going to activate. So now we're going to go to sheet one. So it selects sheet one, or activate sheet one, right? Now it's going to go to select sheet two. So it actually selected sheet three, sorry. So it actually selected sheet three. And this one's going to rename sheet one to new name. And renamed it to new name. Yeah. This one's going to move sheet two, if you watch them, after sheet three. So that should move, that should be at the end now. And it did, it moved to the end. This is going to copy sheet four, wherever it is, okay, after sheet three, after sheet four. Well, where is sheet four? Well, sheet four is at the end. That's actually on the second position. So it actually created it right there. See? And then it says sheet four, we want to select that when we're done, and we select it like that. And so that's the idea. So you can go back and actually show you this multiple selection take capability. So if I take this one here and select sheet four, and come down here and paste it a couple of times, and put the word false out here, Put the word false out here. If I want to select sheet four and the next one, which is sheet three, with a parenthesis two, like this. And then I want to select sheet three. So this is, so I click here, press my F8. Actually, I didn't want to do that, did I? So, so what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, just comment these out here. We're going to jump right down to there. Okay, so this is going to select sheet four, which it is right now. Then the default says select that one and sheet four. This is going to select, oh, I spelled that wrong. Sheet three. All right, so you're going to run that. And it selected all three of them. See, so that's the difference between the select and the activate, which is it actually highlights all three of them. And that way, if I come up here now and type something on this sheet, then it's going to actually put that text on all three sheets. That's a typical Excel feature. If you know the names of the sheets, then use this method to identify the sheets, if you know the name. If you don't know the names, you can actually go through and do it this way and just simply say, well, wherever the position is, I want to take sheet one, wherever that is, and activate it, and then go to sheet three, 
and activate it. And now these names are all different. See it? This new name and all this is all different. So we don't know the names because we renamed several of them. And so the program doesn't know what the names are. So it just knows the position to these names. So let's go through and look at that. All right, so we're going to go here, and I'm going to say, okay, now I'm looking at the position of these names. So there's sheet one, there's sheet three. And then sheet two, see sheet one is actually, the name is new name, but I don't know the name of it. So I just know that it's the first sheet in the list. So if I press the F8, I can say, okay, let's go to sheet one activate. So it is active, it's already activated, so it will go there. Then it says select sheet three. And that's on the third position, but it's in the fourth, physically in the fourth. This is going to rename sheet one to new name, which we already is. So it's just going to give it the same name, right? And this is going to move sheet two, which is actually sheet my sheet two, after sheet three, which is actually sheet three. So, so it's going to be in between sheet three and sheet two, as you can see down there. And it moved it there. Right, right. It's going to copy after sheet four, sheet three after sheet four. So we're sheet three. That's right there. It's going to copy that after sheet four, which would actually be there. Okay, so there's what sheet four right here. So it copied it after that. Wherever that was physically at, it actually copied it. So interesting. Understanding what method you want to use. To manipulate your sheets is, is probably an important element of this. And then third method would be the index number. So you're just simply putting a number in here for the position of the thing. It's just a different style you can use to, to do that. Okay. So that's the idea. Those are the three methods that you can use to identify the sheets. And we're doing the same kind of thing here. You can see. So we talked about activate, we talked about select, and the difference between those and the false statement in there. So we went through that a little bit. This one here is select two worksheets. This is using the false to select two worksheets. And we sort of did that a second ago, all right? The name property. So this, we talked about this a little while ago too. And the fact is that you can name a sheet, give it a specific name. And then active sheet, this identifies where is the active sheet. This is the active sheet name, and then it actually puts the sheet name in there. Add default worksheet, this is as the worksheet before the selected active sheet. Okay, so these are just several commands we need. We'll go through some little exercise and run through these. You can add sheets before or after the selected sheet. And this one here is add sheet after a certain sheet. And this one here is add before sheet two. So you're just kind of going through these different commands. So we'll open this worksheet again. It looks like you can actually put in the sheet name and actually create your own names in here too. So we'll go through and do some of these. Looks like you can delete a certain sheet, extract a certain name, rename a worksheet. So yeah, we've gone through several of these. Okay, let's go through and just do some things. Let's go through and close out that file so we have a nice clean file. Or if anything, you can just create a new blank one, okay, if you want. So let's just create a new blank file. And we have sheet one. We want to create sheet two, sheet three, and sheet four. So what we want to do is let's go through to create a little exercise to kind of set up the sheet for us, rename the sheets for us, and kind of put them in the right order. So what we want to do is we're just going to write some code to say, I want to give these names a specific naming convention. We don't want to call it sheet one. Maybe we'll call it project one, project two, project three. And so we're just going to write some code to rename those sheets to set everything up properly for us. 
right, so let's go through Visual Basic. And we're going to come down to our worksheet. Book, book two. Oh, it is book two. This is book three. Okay, so there's book three. We're going to add a module to book three. And we're going to simply set up some code here. We're going to simply say, and a sub, and we're going to say name sheets. So we're going to go through and we're going to say use one of our commands. Now, if you know the names are worksheet sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, then you can use that. But if you don't know that, then you can use the physical position called sheet one. So let's write these out. Make it a sheet. We have to look at it here. And then double quote the name. So there's one method. The other method is work sheets. Then name. What's the second method, right? And I'm going to comment these on. I'm just going to write these up here so if you have them, we can use them and change them if we need to. It's going to be called sheet one. This or is it dot select. So we have something that's in there. Dot select. And this is going to be dot select. And then the third method would be the word worksheets with a number in it. So this is the index number, and it would be the word worksheets with a number, a position number in it. So this would be worksheets. Those are the different styles. And we can go through and just maybe we should just select them using the different styles first. And then we'll go through and we'll write some code to rename them all. Okay. Let's just use some selection techniques first. So if I use sheet with double quote and put in here sheet three, then I said dot select. So that would select sheet three, correct? Other method we could use is the worksheets name, select. I'm just going to copy and paste my little things here. So this is going to be sheet one. That's the name of it called sheet one, correct? That's another method. So it's going to, you can use either this method to identify it. You can also look at it from the position perspective. That would be the position this way. If I said, I want to select sheet four. Then that will select it that way. And it makes no difference which one you use. But we want to show you that just kind of practice this a little bit. And that's going to say, I want to select worksheet one. So let's just run through that and see how that works, just so you can get the naming system down. Now, which one you use, it doesn't matter. Whichever one seems to be the right choice for you. So we're doing something here. Oh, it's sheets. It's sheets, not sheet. So it's sheets. So that's going to select three. And it selected three, as you can see. Now this one's going to use the worksheets command to select sheet one, and it did. Okay. This one's going to use the sheet, the physical name or the position name, to do the position of four, which it did. This one's actually going to select the order of number one, which is going to go back to sheet one, I think, and it did. So that's it gets a little complicated if you don't understand the names. You see, if you're just using a name and not understanding why you're using that name, that's what I've always used. It may be the wrong style of name you're using. So you need to try to think about using the one that's going to work the best for you. And either while all of them are, are valid. Okay. So now we're going to write some code to actually go through and rename those sheets using any one of those methods. 
So you can use whichever one you want. I'll just choose this one maybe. You can simply say sheet one, and I want to rename that, so I'll call that name. I think we press equals to, and then you specify what the name is. So I'll call this my sheet. How about my sheet A? My sheet A. And then again, you can use this command or you can switch it out if you want and try a different command. Maybe I'll use this command here called sheets. And call it sheet two. And I can rename that one to sheet B. So you can go back and use the same method. And usually you would use the same method for these. You wouldn't be switching them back and forth. But I'm just doing this for testing purposes. So I'm just going to do the rest of them here using the same strategy. This is going to be sheet three. So this is a command that what you're going to do is you're going to actually use this to kind of just set up your spreadsheet. So you have a certain standard you want to follow. And whenever you start these new things up, I mentioned project a minute ago. So we could change these names, project one, project two, project A, B, C, or you can sit to my sheets. Uh, but the idea, say you want to set up this whole thing. I'm going to change them to project because that makes more sense. There's project A. So whenever you run this sheet, you want to actually go through and put in and set up this sheet with all these project names. I should just go through and rename these these sheets to the new new naming convention. Okay, and so I'll just walk through that and the whole thing again. So here is my F8. So here is my sheets. It's going to select sheet one, which you did. Sheet three, and then it's going to sheet one. It's going to sheet four, which is the fourth position. Okay. And then it's going to select the first position again, it did. Now it's going to rename the worksheet one to project A, which it did. It's going to rename sheet two to project B. And then it's going to rename sheet three to project C and project D. We we'll dropped out. So that's kind of the idea behind this. So you may want to set up your sheet your spreadsheet a certain way and so you would create new sheets if you needed to. Say we want to add another code in here. So if I add a fifth sheet, now if I add a fifth sheet after B for example, it will be the physical position of five. See? It would be sheet five. But it would be after project B. So I'm going to take all these and comment these out. I've already got that already set up, right? And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to simply, I'm going to identify project B over here first, so I won't physically be there. I'm going to identify project B and add a new sheet after project B. That's what I'm going to do. So let's go back and look at the code to do that. And that way, this is what I normally do, and if I make a mistake, I'll go, definitely go back and look at the code. Here's my activates. Here's my sheets, my name properties. Here's my add default sheet. So this simply says worksheets add will simply add a new sheet. This will add a sheet, I think, to the end of it, to the end of the, the number five. See it? But if you want to add it after a specific sheet, then you can say worksheets add after a specific sheet. So it would actually show you that, but it would actually come in as number five. I'll select this. This is the what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put that right here. It says worksheets add after worksheet B. So this would be project B quote, and close, right? 
So that's what I'm looking for. So I want to add a new sheet after B. Now, if I just say worksheets add, I'm assuming it's going to put it at the end of the group. But I'm going to put that just for fun. Worksheets dot add. And again, I'm assuming it's going to add it at the end of the group. What if I'm right here? I kind of forgot this one little point. So this let's see what we got here. Okay. So it's going to add it after B. So we should see a new sheet appear after B. And we did, right? Now if I just say add a sheet, the question is will it put the sheet after five, sheet five? Or will it put it after project D? Does it use the current selected sheet to add it? Or does it just add it to the end of the list? And I forgot that little subtle issue, by the way. So it looks like it put it after the selected sheet. So you could go either way with that, right? It could have either put it at the end of the group, into the whole list that you see in front of you, or it does it add it after the active sheet. So either way you go. So this is a setup, maybe to set up your sheets a certain way and to manipulate them from that point on. All right, so let's see what else we have in here. This one here is a delete a worksheet. So if we want to delete a worksheet, we can identify the worksheet one way or another, one of the ways, and put dot delete. Pretty similar to what we've done with cells and stuff. Extract a worksheet. This is going to simply say active sheet, name, and it's going to extract the information out of there. Interesting. This is value here. This one here is going to rename the sheet. We talked about the rename. We didn't do the delete. We're going to do that still. And down here is a looping feature that actually goes through and loops through each worksheet. And it uses this thing called worksheet count. The worksheets count command is tells me how many worksheets are actually physically there. And then it's going to go through and search through those one at a time, and then you can do stuff to it. So we can actually rename the sheet. Say we don't know what the names are, but we want to rename all the sheets to a new naming convention. But I don't know what's there. See? So I'm going to have to cut this code out and see if I can work through all of the sheets and rename them all. So here we can say, okay, so here it says, go to X is the counter, so it's gonna say, it's gonna multiple times, I don't know how many times I'm gonna count because it depends on what this number says. And we can determine what that number is by saying message msg box. And we can say worksheets cat dot count. Dot count. And just so we can see what it's given us here. First, currently I have about six here. See it? But we're going to see what this command actually gives us. I'm assuming it's six. If you delete one of these, then it's going to be five, of course, right? And what's interesting, what if I deleted this one here? Let's do that. If I deleted this one here, that means it's going to still show six here, and that two will be gone. In this case, we're going to say take position one, wherever that is, okay? We're going to select it, and then it says whatever the active sheet is, we want to rename it. We want to name that active sheet to whatever the current name is, okay? And we're going to put the word report behind it. And I want to loop through that however many worksheets there are. Or I can go through and rename or You might say the word backup or something like that. So I'm going to go through this and just see what this does. So we're going to find out what this actually gives us. It gave us the number six because there's six physical worksheets out there. Now we're going to go through and select 
the first one on the list, which happens to be Project A. Now it's going to rename Project A and put the word report behind it. There it is, Project A report. Then it's going to go to next, and then it's going to, that one's going to be report. Now this is sheet six report, sheet five report, sheet C report, and sheet D report, and then it drops out. So, okay, so that's a thing we can do there. We didn't delete a sheet yet. So how about if we say, well, we're getting a lot of stuff out there now. I'm not worried about deleting. I think you, you can select it or delete it. It's pretty straightforward, I think. This one here says select. This is going to select multiple sheets, it looks like. And then it's going to count them, but then it's going to select multiple sheets from the second sheet to the end, it looks like. It's not going to delete the first one. It's going to select the first one. It's going to select the second one to the end. And, that, and it's going to highlight them all. Getting up to another little spot. There's a lot of redundancy here to some degree. Just different styles of code that has some interesting twists to it. I'm trying to show you lots of variations here. This is your add after. Went to that a little bit. There's the count feature there, so we use the word sheets count instead of worksheets count. So there's a couple of variations of that count thingy you can use. So this moving, we, we kind of did some moving a little bit, so we're okay with that. What I want to get down to is the, see so this is the paste method. And we talked about this, the active cell, select, copy, and then worksheets, sheet two, select, and then we're pasted. See, so we, we kind of dealt with this a little bit in the previous day because we did use this active sheet paste here. But what we're saying is this is actual sheet command. That's, that's identifying the sheet and paste it wherever the sheet is. You see, wherever your cell is. That's where it kind of crosses over a little bit. I want to get down a little bit further down here. And I put a lot of examples here because some people that really need to use this need lots of variations. If somebody who really is interested in this can go through all of these and kind of learn a lot about these things. Here's your paste special. We've already talked about that before. Now this is where I want to get to here is the hiding feature. So this will allow us to hide sheets and unhide sheets. There's a third method. There's a hide sheet and an unhide sheet. There's a third method down here called very hidden. I thought this is rather interesting. Is you can't unhide it, basically, when it's very hidden. And so we'll run through a couple of these and there's some protection down here too. Let's run through a couple of these hiding sheets. Let's start with a brand new worksheet file, and that way we kind of the names are a little cleaner to work with. And we'll go through and hide some of these sheets, and we'll unhide them using code, and then we'll do a hide very hidden. So I'm going to close off my, uh, where's my worksheets? I don't have worksheets up here at all. So I'll close it off. I'll close several of these off. Keep that code. These files open and I'll open up file open what I'll call worksheets worksheet and that gives me my sheet one two three four so what we want to do is we want to hide some of these sheets and then use the code to unhide So we're going to go to our worksheet, we're going to add a module, and we're going to uh, create some code to hide sheet two, for example. So we're going to simply say sub, hide it, okay, and then we're simply going to say, use one of your commands, I can say sheet one, I'll use that method, dot, we have to say that we're hide. 
think we have to say select. You already forgot the format for it. Go back and look. Repeat one like this. You have to say visible, then you specify the option for that visibility. And then the Excel sheet hidden, Excel sheet visible. So we say dot visible, and then parameter is Excel, control space bar, this would be, got the command now, is it hidden? It is sheet hidden. So it's sheet, control space bar, and there's my sheet hidden command, there's my visibility command, and there's my very hidden command. So we'll first do our sheet hidden, and that's all I want to do is just run that to hide that sheet or I put equal here. It's interesting because some of the other commands we used did not put an equal sign there. You didn't have to put an equal for the parameter, and it's, but this one looks like you do. All right, so that's all that was. Okay, so we're going to hide sheet 2, or sheet 1 in this case, and sheet 1's hidden. So I can come back down here and right click on this and say unhide and bring sheet one back, right? Or I could actually write some code to bring it back. So in this case, I can go ahead and hide sheet one. Then I can come down here and say sheet one. I can I can put one here and then I can change the parameter from not sheet hidden, make it sheet visible, right? Get all these commands. So it's sheet visible. So I can hide it and then I can make it visible. So, so there's gonna hide it. I can run another command to make it visible. Okay. Now another command here is this thing called very hidden sheet very -E -E hidden and let's go ahead and run this so it takes sheet one and it hides it very hidden like that now the difference is when I right click on this I can't unhide it see it so if you want to hide something where people can't find it then they can actually you can make it very hidden so if you're writing some code to do some backups or something of some sheets, then you can actually make it very hidden and you can't unhide it. The only way you can unhide it is, yeah, you guessed it, by using code. <laughs> so if I ran my code here, I can actually unhide it by writing code. So it requires a VB code to unhide it. Okay. Are we doing okay with all this so far? So should I check all my Excel sheets to make sure there aren't any hidden uh, tabs? Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. There could be. Yeah, you don't know if there's some something somebody's doing behind the scenes here. So what we want to do now is just create a little project. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to make a copy of sheet one. Okay. I want to rename that copy to to call backup, all right? And then I want to make it very hidden so that people don't even realize that we're backing it up. So when somebody comes to this sheet and you know that, that if they mess up or something like that, then you know that you can actually go through and extract the sheets. You see what I'm saying? You can go through it and go back to the backup if you have to. If somebody really screws it up, then you have that extra precaution here as the programmer to know that there is a backup. It's all not lost. We can actually go to the backup to see it. But they don't know that there's a backup being created. Okay, so we're going to take sheet one, we're going to back it up, and we're going to call it, rename it to the word backup. And then we're going to make it very hidden so that they don't even know that the backup is even there. Okay? So what we, how are we going to do that? So we can say, how do we do it? Any thoughts? I'll call the sub 
back up. Okay. And we're going to first make a copy of it, correct? Do you remember how to make copy? I'm letting you think it out a little bit. Okay. How do we make a copy? Sheet. Sheet one dot. We would just say dot copy or dot activate. I put copy right here. See, there's a copy there. So maybe we can just say sheet one copy. And you can specify if you want to put it after a certain spot or something like that. So that's going to copy it, correct? I'm not going to spend any time in the workbook section. Uh, a couple other things here is add a password and that kind of stuff. So look at that. Uh, here's the workbook section. Uh, I'm not going to spend any time in that, but it's very redundant in terms of the things. Activate the active workbook. You specify the file name and you say, this is the one I want to activate. So it opens up that, that particular file. You can copy a document, looks like you can copy information. You can save it. And I don't really do a whole lot of workbook manipulation. It looks like you can rename it too, it looks like. So it looks like you can protect it, protect the workbook. So you can do that and unprotect it basically. Typical features of workbook manipulation. Here's close all workbooks, little code to actually close up all the workbooks that are open. 